Hello, uh, I'm Dr Emma Wadi. I'm a reader in nonlinear mechanics at Imperial College in London. Uh, my speciality is structural engineering and structural mechanics. Um, for example, if you wanted to design the Shard, which is a great big tall structure in uh, the centre of London, uh, this ha has massive long columns and you want those columns not to break because of the massive um, dead load that's on. So with the Shard, of course, you have these massive columns, it's a 300 meter tall structure, and the bottom part of the columns will be under massive amount of load. Now I've got a little model here of a, of a little column element here, which is made out of a composite material, and what we're going to do is apply a little bit of a, a load to it. And you see, now a column should basically remain straight when, we, when it's under a load. So I'm going to apply a load, and initially, of course, that's exactly what happens. But as you apply a bit more force, you can see a bit of bending. And this bending is actually a, something called buckling, which arises from the fact that there's too much force on the column. Now, for um, the buckling of a column, the most important aspect is actually the geometry, and the geometry defined as something called a slenderness. Now, we all know what a slenderness is uh, in, real, in sort of common language, but a slenderness of a column has a particular definition. Now, if we take the length of this column here and call that L, okay, and then we define a slenderness lambda, which is L divided by R, where L is the length, and R is the sort of size of the cross section. Okay, so the size of the cross section here is means the size of the rod itself in cross section. So for example, it has a certain width, might be about five millimeters, and a certain depth, about ten millimeters. Okay, so having defined the slenderness of our column, what we're really interested in is the force that it can take before it buckles. Uh, this column here is of, uh, is of length L, and we can um, actually relate that to the actual force that we have in our column. Okay, so from this we can um, use a formula that was derived by Leonard Euler in 1744. He actually found that the buckling stress, the force, effectively the force per unit area before it buckles, is equal to pi squared, we all know what pi squared is, multiplied by material constant E, which is called the Young's modulus, and this has a particular value for any given material. For example, for steel, a uh, very common structural material, the value is 2 times 10 to the 11 newton square meter. Divide that by lambda squared, the slenderness that we defined earlier. Okay, so now we've defined the uh, buckling stress, which is given by this formula here. Um, this is primarily a geometric criterion. Okay, so structural failure, in fact, has two criteria. It has a geometric criterion, but it also has a material criterion. And this is demonstrated by the following graph. Okay, so this graph plots on the y-axis here sigma f, which is defined as the failure stress, or the, the maximum stress that the um, structure can actually withstand. On the x-axis here, we have our familiar slenderness. Okay. Now, if we take the buckling stress that we derived earlier from Euler, we end up with a curve called a hyperbola. Okay? Now, there is an issue with this curve in that it goes on to infinity when lambda goes to zero. Okay, so a very stocky column, you would uh, assume that the um, structure can take more and more and more force and it will never buckle. Of course, this is nonsense. It will fail due to its material. Okay, so there's a limiting value that we can have, which is called a yield stress. I'm calling it sigma y. And this defines the maximum stress that the uh, structure can take, whatever the geometry. Okay, then we can define, if I just um, look in, mark in blue here, a region known as a safe region. And I'll just rub off this, uh, this part here. And we can define an unsafe region. Okay. And so the geometry actually, dep actually governs whether we have a geometric uh, dominated failure, which is where uh, the curve is our, defines our safe region, and where the material is important, which is defined by where the flat line of the sigma y, the yield stress, is our safe region. So this graph actually it gives the engineer a bit more information than uh, that I've just described. Um, for example, 
uh, lambda here is dependent on the length uh, divided by this uh, quantity r. Now, the length is normally given when you're designing a structure. For example, the height of a column, you'll know what the floor height is and so on. But r is what the engineer can change. So by changing r, we can actually work out what the actual strength of a column is and how it relates to the actual forces that are actually applied to the structure. Of course, this is a quite an idealised uh, discussion we're having right now, but um, there are also many other complexities that the engineer has to deal with, things like defects, the way that uh, a when the uh, structural materials are manufactured, they're not perfectly straight, the forces are not perfectly aligned, and even when you handle uh, materials on site, they can get dropped, they can be cracked, and so on. And when we connect things together, we have to drill holes in them, we have to weld them, so these, af these affect the material properties and the geometric properties quite significantly. So geometry plays a, a very, very um, important role in structural design, and I hope uh, you found it instructive.